Welcome back to Classic Game Room, the podcast. It's still here. And for the first time in a while, I've got some game related news here for the podcast. Two big things, two big announcements involving games spelled properly with a Z. And then another Z for the extra dose of Zaxxon, which, ha- wait, no, those are X's. Well, you can spell games with X's too, whatever. Spelling is dumb. But you know what's not dumb? The Earth Defense Force fighting for freedom against space bees and giant mutant frogs with laser guns. And huge ass ginormous ants. Earth Defense Force 6 is now available. I was gonna say something else, but then I got distracted. With so many new Earth Defense Force missions that are basically like the same as the old Earth Defense Force missions, except they're new Earth Defense Force missions, what's not to get distracted about because you should be playing Earth Defense Force instead of doing whatever dumbass stuff you're doing right now? What are you doing? Oh, you're listening to this podcast. Well, it's not my fault. What's the second piece of games-related news? You wanna know what it is? There's a brand new classic game room review of the Deadpool pinball machine at cgrpublishing.com. I'm wrapping up the uh, history of classic game room book. It's done. I was kind of I was waiting for like the final chapter, and when I started to see all this stuff come together, I was, it's like I got I've got the ending of the book. It's like a, it's a 25 year adventure, and. I didn't actually expect this, and I, I didn't even know it was happening until I finally looked at the like big picture at the end when looking for like this this conclusion of of the story, and like the end went full circle. 1999, we started on our own website, videos on our own website with with some comics, and you could buy stuff like T-shirts and coffee mugs. 2024, the videos are on our own website with comics, and you can buy stuff like T-shirts and coffee mugs. It has literally gone full circle in 25 years. I mean, it's a lot bigger now than when it started, but uh, Classic Game Room and 80s Comics running weekly on Fridays at cgrpublishing.com for years. For like the longest time, people have always complained about the ads on YouTube videos. The pesky ads interfering with your viewing experience. What do they have now? There's like three minutes of ads for every 15 seconds of video? Well... CGRpublishing.com, no ads. Just come on over, watch the video, hang out, browse, maybe buy a beer glass if you want one. Like, would you rather watch like political ads or buy a CGR beer glass? Honestly, it's a no-brainer. One of them sucks, the other one dispenses beer. Who defeats? We defeats. Also, it gives me an excuse to go out and play pinball and drink a few beers weekly, so. And it's fun, as long as I don't have to post it at that other place. So CGRpublishing.com. Subscribe to the newsletter, check it out. And there won't be CGR videos every week because they take a long time to make, but there are a few more planned. So, celebrating 25 years of classic game room by making more classic game room and washing it down with some refreshing beverages. It's the way it was meant to be. And 80s Comics is coming along for the ride. Got a brand new review of some Thundercats. Ho! been busy wrapping up the Omega Ronin graphic novel. It's about half complete. It's gonna be like 80, 90 pages. And the next album, the next Omega Ronin album, is the soundtrack to that graphic novel. Uh, it's like a 40, 44 minute soundtrack. It's on vinyl. It's going to vinyl. I'm in, uh, I'm, in, I'm in the studio right now producing it. And the whole thing is going to be kept secret. Like all the, all the sounds, all the, all the settings, all the beats, everything is going to be kept under wraps until it comes out. So... 
For those of you who picked up your copies early on Kickstarter, you'll be the first ones to blast some Omega Ronin on vinyl in the entire universe. It's very exciting. And I'm producing the album like a soundtrack, which gives me more time to like just dig into some weird sounds and experimental effects and like tie the whole thing together like it's one film, almost. I'm, I'm actually producing the soundtrack like it's a film. I've done plenty of films over the years, so it's nice to get back into that. Just like, it's gonna be 40 minutes, and you sort of build the whole thing like so it flows, it ebbs and flows, and it's just, um, it's really good. Having a great time with it, and that'll be out uh, November, December. The other big news is that Ethel the Cyborg Ninja celebrates 10 years this year. I never got a chance to really dig in and just make the series big because I kept getting dragged into other things over the past decade. It's been quite a decade. Um, but the third issue is actually like 80% done, so I just decided to uh, complete the whole thing and tie the first three issues together into one oversized hardcover edition. And that'll be uh, coming out in December. That's going to go to Kickstarter for pre-orders, but you can follow it right now on Kickstarter. I don't think it's not going to be out yet. I'm still working on the covers. There's going to be multiple cover designs. And when I get all those wrapped up and all the marketing language, then, then it will launch probably in a week or two from this podcast. So, Kickstarter, Ethel the Cyborg Ninja. If you like Ethel, Cosmic, Death Brick, Jesus, the Coked Up Chicken, Edit, Station One, Wind Squid, Space Scar, and Lord Carnage, well, this is the book for you. It's a good one. I'm drawing it on the uh, same framework that I'm using for Omega Ronin, and by fr framework, sort of like this boring technical term, but like, it's a style that I'm using to draw the new, the new stuff. It's like a combination of digital, CGI, and hand-drawn pencil and pen all like wrapped into one. It's very, very, it looks nice. Lots of detail. I like to give, I like to give readers like a whole bunch of stuff to just like look at. Especially with the soundtrack, it's cool because you can like just listen to the music over and over again and like, you know, look through the artwork for various hidden things. There's always hidden things in this stuff. And after that, I'm going to be taking a producer role on two or three more series of books, graphic novels, comics. I'm not sure just yet what the size of these things are going to be yet. But one of them is going to be on giant monsters crushing things. Probably monsters from space because I think space monsters are the best monsters. And I got a barbarian series in development right now. Producing a barbarian series. And there's a third one. Which, is, which I'm still in the fence on, so I haven't quite figured that one out yet. But those will be 2025 releases. Uh, CGRpublishing.com. Make sure to follow our newsletter. Subscribe to the newsletter so you get updates on all this stuff. And don't miss any numbered or signed editions. Because we do. I am releasing a bunch of that kind of stuff on the Kickstarters and whatnot. You want Ethel the Cyborg Ninja with an actual hand-drawn Ethel on the cover? We got one of those coming up. So I'm, I'm wrap, as I'm wrapping up the History of Classic Game Room... Book. And there's a subtitle there, but I'm not I'm not 100% sold on it yet, so I'm still doing the cover art when I'm... It'll be out in... It was, was going to be June, then I pushed it to July, now it's going to be like September. But it's done, I'm just kind of still... You know, lots of loose ends on these kinds of books, it's pretty big. The proofreading alone is enough to like, murder a small animal. Thankfully I'm a big animal, so it's just... It's more like just slow and painful for me. Like this, this entire conclusion, there's like this whole thesis in the book that uh, uh, what was novel and unique back in that back in the 90s, early 2000s, uh, at now is just like tired and being overrun by artificial intelligence. So uh, the entire comic book project I'm working on is actually my response to uh, the AI stuff that's going to be obliterating the entire social media landscape over the next decade. Have fun with that, by the way. We're not using uh, AI for the comics because... In the end, as an artist, whether you're doing comic books, whether you're making music, doesn't matter. The only way that you can survive is if you're selling a physical product or performing it live, period. Now, a lot of people don't want to hear that, but uh, the uh, barrier to entry is having a skill. It's, it's having some talent. It's, it's the way it used to be. It's all coming back to that. So uh, if you're going to create something, it better be something that can't be duplicated by a, by a sentient computer. So, basically something that's a real physical, tangible product. So my response to this is we're going to have a whole bunch of 1970s style comic books, giant robots, monsters, barbarians, physical books, also digital options, but these are made by humans. 
Got some uh, real artwork, art cards, vinyl albums. All this stuff is in development. That's what's going on in the world of the CGR these days. 25 years later, just came back full circle. I was kind of surprised when I saw that. Like, we should have just kept doing what we were doing in the 90s, except it was so astronomically expensive, there was no way to possibly continue <laughs> to continue the show in, in 2000. Uh, and you'll read all about that. We had this whole, like, studio in a box concept, and uh, it was like five years before YouTube. We actually had some pretty clever ideas, but uh, nothing, nothing really caught on. So, long story short, a quarter century never happened. Everyone just got older. So I, I am just knee-deep in technical stuff on, on Omega Ronin, so it's kind of hard to talk about because um, just working to get the art up to where I want it to be, working the, the story's already done, uh, the storyboarding's already done, so it's really just finishing pages at this point, and I just kind of go through in waves after the storyboards. I'll go through and do like a rough, like a rough um, kind of final, almost final drawing, uh, and then just just to be, just to make sure everything looks good and it flows well and it reads well, and then at the very end I'll go back and like adjust all of the the final lines, and like the blacks and the grayscale, and I like to I need to go through with like a one consistent polish across the book. What never works is when you is when I'm doing a book. Ethel the Cyborg Ninja One is is the biggest <laughs> biggest offender here. Like I I got so much better by the time I finished the book, I had to go back and like redo the whole thing twice. And then I, I, when I look at it again, there's a lot of inconsistency with the uh, shading and whatnot. So I mean, it's just the way it is. And you know, you, mistakes are fine as long as you learn from them. And, and moving on from that, I, I, I try to just do all the finishing work at once, which is obviously a pretty big task. So it's nice to have a project like this uh, with some pre-orders already in the can. So uh, that, that's uh, super helpful. And I'm actually going to just clean up some of the mistakes from the, uh, the, first, the first issue. The second issue actually turned out really good. I did that in 19 uh, when I was looking at doing more comics, but then a lot of my nonfiction stuff just flattened all that. So I didn't really get a chance to uh, spend as much time in the next couple of years. And now if I want to do a nonfiction book. I feel like I'm starting over from scratch. Like I've done all the stuff I already know. So it would take me like two years to research a book. And I'm not really wild about that. So... Uh, one thing I do know a lot about is space monsters that crush things. I'm very versed in I'm very versed in space monsters. It's a thing I know a lot about. And barbarians. So CGR Publishing is going to corner the market in 1970s style weird ass comic books because god damn it nobody loves the 70s more than me. <laughs> I really miss. You have no idea how much I miss them. Like the 80s a lot, yes, obviously, but like the 70s, there was like an extra layer of sleaze in the 70s that's never been duplicated, and I miss that. I'm bringing that back in all of our work. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, uh, I suggest going back and starting with Logan's Run, my, one of my favorite films from the era. It's very very timely today, by the way. All these films are actually timely. Soylent Green, definitely. Zardoz is, well, so many drugs. Those are some of my favorites. Then you can go into the, the uh, black exploitation era. I love black exploitation films so much. Like, I grew up in the 90s just watching all that stuff on VHS tapes. Uh, Black Belt Jones is one of my favorites with Jim Kelly from Men of the Dragon. You gotta check out Black Belt Jones. Truck Turner's good. And the, the 70s are awesome. Like, that's why The Empire Strikes Back is so good. Because they made that in the 70s. Like, that is the 70s. Even though it came out in 80. Billy D bridges the gap between the 70s and future space people. He brings the 70s with him. With style. That's why it's so Lando. I mean, just imagine if Soylent Green had the same budget that they had for The Empire Strikes Back. It'd be incredible. I mean, Soylent Green is good just the way it is, but they would be better, you know, with some more money tossed at, tossed at it. Though, I don't know, I, I kind of like this, the shot. I feel like this is another thing that you would actually see today and not even think twice about it. But like the shots of like the giant, sh like the, the bulldozers just pushing people. And <laughs> like, that's just a thing that would happen now. Tuesday is Soylent Green Day and everybody just gets crushed by giant machines and the rich people are living in penthouses with computer games and furniture. And if you know what the furniture is, cheers. It's not actually furniture. And the computer game I'm talking about is a computer space, by the way. I don't know anything useful, but I know this. 
And uh, and before somebody says, well, you used AI. Yes, I, I've, I've tinkered with the AI tools because I think it's best to know your enemy. <laughs> it's, you probably should play around with it just, just to see what this stuff can do and how redundant it's going to make so many artistic and other careers. It's, it's crazy powerful, and it's just the beginning. AI is good for a lot of things. Like If you, you want to ha- ask a question, AI is actually pretty good to like figure out the best way for you to ask your question. That's why it's so good for programming. I think it's kind of neat for artistic designs that are way outside of the box, stuff that like I would never think about or no human would ever come up with. And just like, especially some of the video stuff, you're like, you tell the computer what to do and it just comes up with with things that are so just bizarre and they're they're just fascinating, but there's no way to sell any of them (laughs) because nobody wants to buy any AI content because they would rather buy an actual drawing on a piece of paper. So this, you know, again, this is what brings me all back to the, you know, seventies comic books in the future. So hidden beneath all nonsense in this podcast is an actual business lesson for uh, those of you out there trying to make a living in this stuff. Physical products that can't be duplicated by a computer. Like the video's not there yet, but you, like what's the first thing that AI video is going to be really good at is impersonating influencers talking into a camera. Let's see, we need an attractive person here talking about shoes and drama. That's like three words of, of prompts. Uh, a button click, it's done instantly, and uh, there'll be factories just just churning this stuff out. And companies that would have once paid an influencer some big money are just now going to either create their own influencers or pay a fake influencer. <laughs> it's, this is it, this it, it, like literally Soylent Green starts to look appealing after thinking about what the real future is going to be like. Let's see. Do I take the giant shovel crushy things? Or super annoying fake influencers. Mm, I'm going to take my chances with the tractors. Just imagine when the AI influencers start to fight with each other and you know, to create drama for extra clicks. It starts to make Carousel look pretty good, right? I can explode on Carousel or watch YouTube. Oh, God. One of them gets it over with quickly. Nobody would believe the news in RoboCop these days because it's not extreme enough. (laughs) So Omega Ronin's here to bring the smooth beats from the 80s and CGR Publishing's here to bring hot barbarians and murder robots from the 70s with that extra layer of sleaze. I'm trying to find out if we can duplicate the paper stock. This is tough. I'm not sure I can actually pull this one off. It's kind of like trying to get movies made on Laserdisc, like, it's just, there's just no way to actually do it, and I'm not sure that there's a, there's a good way, a good, a good affordable way to, uh, to get these, to get comics printed on, like, just that, that deteriorating old school smoky smelling newsprint or whatever that stuff was. You can fake it, but that's not quite the same. Over the next couple weeks, I'll be wrapping up Ethel the Cyborg Ninja. Uh, the hardcover trilogy, and that that's a really fun book. Like, Omega Ronin actually has some shred of believability, even though it's insane. Uh, Ethel the Cyborg Ninja is just straight up insane. Like, there's, there's no believability. <laughs> there's nothing even remotely realistic in that. They actually name an entire planet after Kenny Loggins. So if you want all your dreams to come true, you have to go to planet Kenny Loggins. It's uh, in the zone of danger. Cosmic Death Brick makes... A return, as does a certain chicken on drugs. So when I'm writing Omega Ronin, it's like, well, I mean, this is nuts, but it actually could happen if this sequence of events happened. And then, like, what if you really did put some characters into this situation? Like, let's let's think about what they would really do and, like, the actual effects of, like, you know, the, the things surrounding them. But with Ethel the Cyborg Ninja, it's just like, well, they're going to go to another universe and then they're going to shotgun beers and then they're going to fight some giant monster with a sword. So that's all the time I got for today. Uh, Hopefully you check out the Deadpool Pinball Machine Review, cgrpublishing.com. Some new, bunch of 80s comics reviews in the works. And uh, some other fun stuff too. So talk to you next week. Hopefully uh, you you stay off carousel. Someone says, hey, you want to ride the carousel? Run away as quickly as possible. Through the tunnels. Then you'll have to fight a robot before you escape. (laughs) 